Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. With all the recent news of Halloween 4 getting a sequel, aka Halloween 4 Part 2 for example, I thought that I would finalise a pitch that I had personally in my mind. I wrote it all out, not word for word, but it's a, it's a loose pitch that I've always had for a sequel to Halloween 4. Now, I've never done anything like this before on the channel. I've never given my pitch to what I believe should be a sequel to a certain movie in the franchise because most of the time, opinions and pitches, etc., are met with hatred because there's some fans that just have it set in their way that they think a film should go a specific way. And if it doesn't go their specific way, then they automatically hate what's in front of them, aka Halloween Ends. Halloween Ends was a sequel that some people liked, but a lot of people didn't because they didn't get what they wanted with the Michael Myers character. I completely understand that. It's completely understandable. So with my pitch that I've got, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, as they call it in the UK, but it's something that I've, even, I've always envisioned myself, even after seeing Halloween 5, where I think to myself, this is the way they should have went with Halloween 4 sequel, not the way they've done with Halloween 5. I'm not sure what Dwight Little has got in mind for his pitch. He said he's already pitched a sequel to Halloween 4. Dwight Little, for the, those of you who don't know, is the director of Halloween 4, and he's pitched his idea for Halloween 5 or Halloween 4.2 or Halloween 4 Part 2. I don't know who he pitched it to. I don't know when he done it. Apparently, it would have been before August 2023 that he's done this pitch. So this pitch is something that I've had in my mind for a, a good number of years now and because of his idea of because of the um the news that's came out that he's pitched an idea i thought to myself do you know what i'm going to finalize my pitch and then i'm going to pitch that to you guys and maybe you can tell me what you think if there's anything that you would change in my pitch or you like it or you absolutely hate it i don't mind it would just be an opinion at the end of the day so i've got my pitch here it's not long so Bear with me, guys. It's not long. I'm just going to read out my pitch, but it's not going to be word for word, the script or anything like that. So rest assured, it's not going to be too long. Okay, here goes. So, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I'm only joking. My pitch for Halloween 4. I'm going to call it Halloween 4 Part 2 because that's just the basic pitch. So, I would start with a flashback opening to November the 30th, 1987. Now, the reason I would do that, first of all, is... That's the only date that I have online that I can see where Laurie and her husband died in a car accident. That's the only date that I have. It might have been October 87, it might have been a different date, but for my pitch, let's call it the begin on November the 30th, 1987. Now, straight away, as you can tell, there's going to be changes to Halloween 4, and that is a shame, but I think this has to happen for us to move forward with a sequel to Halloween 4. So please bear with me. I will be retconning a few things. Not everything, but just a few a few things that can help the story move along. So, 1987. That's where we begin. Flashback opening. Similar to the flashback to Halloween Kills, where you've got a flashback opening to the original. So, in this one, Michael escapes from the sanitarium. The sanitarium that he was taken out of at the beginning of Halloween 4, only this time he escapes on his own a year prior. So Michael escapes Halloween 4 style, but it's a year earlier. Now, we've got a seven-year-old Jamie. She's been babysat by Rachel and obviously Rachel's parents. Well, Laurie and her husband are out on a date. So Laurie and her husband are still with their daughter. They're not giving her away and they're a really tight-knit family. We find out who Laurie's husband is. We can just assume, just for continuity purposes, let's assume that it's Jimmy, and Jimmy's name is Lloyd. So Jimmy Lloyd, and now Laurie Lloyd, Jimmy being Jimmy from Halloween 2. So they've got a daughter, Jamie Lloyd. Fair enough, quite simple, and it keeps the storylines kind of intact as well. So they're out on a date, and we find out that at the same time, Michael Myers has escaped the sanitarium. So what we can do with that story is it turns out that they didn't die in a car accident. They died at the hands of Michael Myers. Now, the way that I would do that is Michael goes to Laurie's home. He finds Laurie's home and he finds that Jamie Lloyd is there with the, the kids, uh, sorry, the, the babysitters, but he doesn't recognise any of them. He's just after Laurie Strode at this moment in time because it's still his sister. 
So he's after Laurie, doesn't see her there, but he sees a note on the fridge saying at such and such a restaurant. So he makes his way to that restaurant. Don't ask me how he knows where the restaurant is. It's just movie magic. But he goes on his way to the restaurant and he finds them at the car or just about to drive away. And as they're about to drive away, Michael manages to stab Laurie and or Jimmy. That causes them to try and drive away fast. The car veers off the road and they smash and they almost die in the car accident, but the car's all wrecked. Michael comes over to do the car and finishes both of them off and then he disappears. And then that's the title card to the Halloween 4 Part 2 and that was a flashback to what actually happened. Instead of Laurie just dying in a car accident off screen, we now get Laurie dying on screen in a car accident, but at the same time at the hands of Michael Myers. It's good so far. After the title card, just for a bit of continuity for any of you guys who have not seen Halloween 4 for a while or haven't seen Halloween 4 at all, you get a small recap of 1988, so the year after, and that is the year that the movie was set in 1988, the first Halloween 4. So we get a bit of a recap that reminds us what actually happened in Halloween 4 leading up to the very end of Halloween 4 where Jamie attempted to kill her stepmother. After that, we're going to cut to modern day and let's assume that it would be the year 2028 because this is 2024 now by the time this script gets to the screen it'll take a few years etc so let's cut to 2028 that would be exactly 40 years after the events of 1988 and then that's when we come to modern day 2028 so Jamie's 48 years old now and we're going to assume because it's a Halloween film, that she's got a 17-year-old daughter, which makes sense, good time age. And then we've also got Rachel back as well. Rachel obviously didn't die at the end of Halloween 4, so she's alive and well, and she's in the film as well. And she's also got a son who's maybe just a little bit older because she's a little bit older than Jamie Lloyd as well. So let's say her son's, I don't know, 19, 20, and he kind of looks after the 17-year-old daughter of Jamie, like a sort of big brother, a brother figure. And those two, as well as Jamie and Rachel, are the four main cast members of the movie. One of the huge issues that we had with the original Halloween 5 is they didn't continue on from the end of Halloween 4. Now, with this sequel to Halloween 4, we also can't do that because of the time difference. It's been 40 years. So, as much as we'd want to address it immediately, we can't do that anymore because of the, the amount of time that's passed. So what we would have to do is just address it throughout the movie, like a, a mental issue that Jamie had. She's now over it, but she fears, in this film, she fears that her daughter will end up the same as her with some sort of mental issue or a mental breakdown. But she's hopeful that that doesn't happen because Michael Myers is apparently dead and she shouldn't fear that Michael's going to come and maybe cause the, the daughter to do that like he did with Jamie. So she's not really worried as much as she was for herself because she believes that Michael is dead. But it will show in this pitch that Michael went down this shaft in Halloween 4 and just didn't come out. They couldn't find his body, but they're assuming now that after 40 years, he's dead completely. But little did they know, he didn't die at the end of Halloween 4. Now this is when we will cut back to our flashback again, only this time to 1988 at the end of Halloween 4. We will see Michael going down the shaft, but it won't be as cheesy as Halloween 5. We won't be going down a stream or anything like that. He'll just fall down into the shaft and he'll crawl around and move away. And then, I know that some people don't like Halloween ends, but we will get some sort of dweller moment where Michael is living in the sewers for a little bit to nurse himself back to health. Now, he doesn't have any Dr. Death or any little man with a parrot to help him get back to health. He has to do it himself, similar to what happened in Halloween End. So as cheesy as it might sound, hopefully it would come on screen a little less cheesy. In this, for my pitch, the only time it takes place in Haddonfield will be the flashbacks. Now, when it goes to modern day, Jamie and Rachel don't live in Haddonfield and it's similar to Laurie Strode, what she done in Halloween H2O. If something like that happened to you, not just to your mother in 1978, but to you in 1988, you certainly wouldn't be living in Haddonfield anymore because you just think the town's cursed, I ain't going to be living there anymore, I'm moving away. So Jamie and Rachel both move away from Haddonfield and that's just so that because Michael Myers didn't get found, they moved away so that if he is still alive, then he won't be able to find them. Similar, again, to Laurie Strode. So Michael does have to spend a bit of the movie looking 
for Jamie and Rachel. Eventually, he obviously finds them, but it takes some time. He goes through a journey as well. And at the same time he goes through his journey, Rachel and Jamie go through their mental journey together, reminiscing as to what happened back at the end of Halloween 4. And obviously, Jamie addressing some of the moments and her feelings to what happened at the end. And I would suggest that they didn't kill the mother Rachel's mother because I think if she did kill her there would be no bond left between Jamie and Rachel so we want to keep that bond but like a distant bond so the mother had to have survived in this pitch for Jamie and Rachel to still be in talking terms so in this one the mother did survive Jamie's stepmother and she's not in the movie we don't address her where she's living in the movie because it's mostly about Jamie Rachel the kids and obviously Michael Myers in this one Michael will find them eventually and I wanted to go back to basics with the stock and slash. I don't want him to, him to jump out and pop out and start killing people. I want it to be a slow burn so that we see him from the distance, we see him in the bushes, we see him behind the trees and we just see him way in the distance when Jamie, Rachel and the kids are just doing their thing. So it's just going to be a bit of a slow burn stock and slash where Michael kills Jamie's daughter's friends, Michael kills Rachel's son's friends, and finally gets to Rachel and Jamie, the, the daughter and the son. I don't know if any of, them all, any of them die or all of them die or a couple of them die. And that's not the type of pitch this is. The pitch for me is just getting that story out there. So the finale would just simply be Michael going after the four of them. That's the finale. Michael versus Rachel Jamie and the two kids. I feel like this pitch would please a lot of fans. I think it's also because some people reckon that you can't have a Halloween film without Laurie Strode. And I don't believe that. I feel like Laurie Strode has been played out to death. But by having Laurie Strode back in a flashback, it pleases fans of Halloween 4 because we get to see what happened to her eventually. It pleases fans of Laurie Strode because they get to see her, maybe not for long, but five minutes or so, which is enough. But then you get fans of people who are sick of the Laurie Strode storyline who will go, okay, that's Laurie Strode there. We know she's dead anyway, but at least we get to see how she died. And that's it. So obviously it's going to have nothing to do with Halloween H2O, Resurrection or the David Gordon Green trilogy. But at least in this one, we still get to see a finalised death of Laurie Strode so that we know there's no coming back and we also know that she's not alive hiding in California somewhere. And finally, I would also make it that this film and these Halloween 4 flashbacks will make sure that you don't have to see Halloween 4 beforehand. I would say that it was a, it would be a recommendation to see Halloween 4 before this film, but I also wanted to stand on its own two feet. So I want to make it so that when we see the flashbacks, when we see some of the, the interactions between Jamie and Rachel, then I want people who are just watching this one and not Halloween 4 to understand the story, understand what they've went through with the flashbacks and the dialogue, and then move forward with this film so that if this pitch actually did happen and if it was successful, then we could get a new series of films featuring Jamie and or Rachel so that we don't have to rely on Jamie Lee Curtis, we don't have to rely on Laurie Strode, we can now have a new protagonist or new protagonists, we could have more than one, we could have both Jamie and Rachel moving on for future sequels. Obviously they're not as old as Jamie Lee Curtis as well, so we could have a good maybe three, four sequels with this Halloween 4 timeline so that that's that's the benchmark and that's where we move forward with this timeline. You can still do your TV series, you can still do spin-offs, etc. But if you had to do a sequel to Halloween 4, if it was an absolute must, then this pitch for me is the best idea that I can think of so far. So what are your thoughts on the pitch, guys? Is it too far-fetched? Is it too detailed? Would you like to see them go back with a flashback to Laurie or would you scrap all that completely? Now, Please only comment if you if you think that there should be, not, not that you think you should be a Halloween 4 sequel, but don't say there shouldn't be a sequel to Halloween 4. I know that. There probably won't be a sequel to Halloween 4, but this video is about what if there was a sequel to Halloween 4. So leave your comments down below, guys. Let me know your opinions, your thoughts on my pitch, and what's your pitch as well. And we can all read everybody's pitches and see, oh, that one's a good one. I'd maybe take that idea from that one and put it into that one. There's so many ideas that everybody has that nobody's got the wrong idea. So leave your pitches down below, guys. Let me know what you think as well, and I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. Ding,
to get you, Barbara. Ever play skin the cat? Someone's in the back! See! Tell me where you are, John! Wolfman's gone. <gasps>